17, verse 6. And when they found them not, they threw Jason and certain brethren to the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. And you know, as I was there reading the scriptures there in Acts, I thought about the thinking about the attitude and the uh, the way that uh, those in the city were, were looking at the gospel that Paul and those with him were preaching. It says these that have turned the world upside down have come together. But really, the message that Paul and those with him were preaching was turning the world right side up. Because the world was already <clears throat> turned upside down. Sin had caused the world to be turned upside down. And we find that the Lord even mentions this in the Psalms chapter. 146. Uh, verse 19. The Lord preserved the strangers. He relieved the fathers and widows. But the way of the wicked determined upside down. So the wicked, the sinners, were already upside down. But they could not recognize that the message that was being preached was turning the world right side up. Was an ailment because you see everything was on a down the trend. Man was headed for destruction. But the gospel was presented to enable us once again to be on an upward course. To be right side up and to be expecting to rise and to go to be with the Lord. First John chapter 5, starting at verse 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world blind with wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even his son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life the mission that we have the gospel that we are preaching if the world will receive it it will turn right side up and be on the right course and all we can do is continue to preach the gospel. And realizing that the gospel is given to us to make sure that the whole world has witness of the fact that God is striving to make all things right. To enable us once again to be reconciled to him. That no one has to be separated from God today. But the message of the gospel is that Jesus has come to save us all. Amen. And in this time of a pandemic, as we were discussing with the pastor, God has found a way to cause all of us in the ministry, or many of us in the ministry, to be reaching out further with the gospel than we had intended probably in normal times. Because we're reaching out in ways that we would not have otherwise. But God is right on the schedule, and he's striving to help us to be on schedule. Sometimes he has to give us a push or a nudge. Sometimes even a little more. And we mentioned that the, the early disciples, it seems they were not reaching out from Jerusalem quick enough, so he sent persecution. And they dispersed, but the scripture says that wherever they disperse, they preach the gospel. Whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, as far as our local services or whatever circumstances or adjustments we have to make, the thing that we must 
must do is preach the gospel. And recognize that God has a way of taking even our local message and making it international. When you find yourself, for whatever reason, preaching on the, the web or, or live uh, Facebook or YouTube or wherever, that message potentially could be heard anywhere in the world. God's turning the world right side up. And the thing about it, mind you, that we know that this is all things God has under control. He, he is working on the whole world. This pandemic is affecting the whole world. You see, it's not just us that's having to make adjustments. All over the world, people are having to make adjustments. And our fellow Christians, fellow believers all over the world are having to make adjustments. But God is using every one of us to find a way to further the gospel. We must not become discouraged. We must not uh, feel despair, but recognize that even in these times, God is getting the gospel around the world and, and the ministry is truly propelling the word of God. We cannot see or understand everything that God is doing, but we can be assured that the word of God is going for a full. And the mission that we have as the body of Christ is going for it. But you know, our problem is we want to visibly see too much. We may want to visibly see more than God intends for us to visibly see. I think we must get our eyes off of trying to visibly see things and just concentrate on carrying the gospel as far as we can and know that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. He has said that he's coming for our church that is without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Well, he's going to do that. But we're waiting to see when all the spots and wrinkles are out. Well, you tell me now, how are you going to do that? How are you going to visibly see? You're not going to be able to look on anybody's heart and say, oh, yeah, their heart is pure. Or their heart is pure. And even as we're perfected, guess what? There's somebody that's going to look at you and they're going to think, now they're just not where they're supposed to be. Yeah. So how are we not? We, we ain't looking to see it. But the thing is that the enemy can distract us if we're expecting to, to see it. But all we got to know is that God's doing it. And it's going to happen. But understand, we may not see it because, you see, when God comes, when the Lord comes, we're still going to be working. And if we were able to see everything, we would not still be working. But we're still going to be working in the midst of the vineyard, in the midst of this world that's upside down. And the scripture says it's going, he's coming as a thief in the night. But we should be expecting. And how are we expecting? By doing all we can work. Striving to preach the gospel. Striving to stay close to him and recognize that he could come any day. And that the gospel that we're sharing, it is truly able to change the world. To change all winds. We know that there are going to be those who are not going to receive it. But it's not going to be because it has not been presented. Amen. It's not going to be because the Lord has not given the world the opportunity. God has a way. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 8. Wherefore, he saith, 
when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, what is it but that? He also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He's given us the ministry of perfection. The word that we have, this gospel that we are preaching in the midst of a pandemic, is able to perfect those who will receive it. It's able to wash the church. It's able to edify the body of Christ. It's for our perfection. It's for our perfection. Amen. And I know we, we, we say things that uh, sound good, and we say, I show looking to see the church perfect. Again, I want you to tell me how you're going to tell. And if we're working up until the day that the Lord comes, how are we going to tell? But that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Remember, perfection is not to be seen in our eyes. It's perfection in the eyes of God. And when God sees us at that place, we may not see it, but it, I think we would do well to think of it and look at it, similar to the time of the town of Baby. As they were building and they were one of the cars, God said, if he left them long, alone long enough, and they had this oneness, that they would accomplish what they wanted to and reach all the way to heaven. Now, if God let us stay here long enough and, and we leave it here, we, we begin to see some things. But the scripture says he's going to cut the work short. He's not going to let us reach that point where we can see those things we're wanting to visibly see. We're going to have to rely upon the Spirit we're going to have to remind, rely upon our faith in the Lord and just continue to work. And know that as we're working, and as Brother Chance reminded us, the Holy Ghost has got to be the source that's propelling us, that's guiding us, and giving us the inspiration. That's why the Lord sent him to guide and to keep us, and to teach us all things, and to let him guide us, let him enable us to reach that place that the Lord needs for us to reach it. And for the work, for the word of God to do what God purposes. The word of God is power. The word of God is able to reach the far corners of the earth. And it doesn't matter how it gets there. You know, Paul, in speaking of the gospel being preached and and some were preaching it to perhaps cause conflict. Some were preaching it perhaps to uh, cause things, thinking the way that they were preaching it would be a hardship. But Paul said the gospel is preached everywhere. And he was not concerned the motives that they had for preaching it if they preached the gospel. And evidently what they were saying was the gospel because he said the gospel is preached every way. Sometimes people preach the gospel for insincere motives. But the word of God is the word. And somebody can preach it, meaning it insincerely when they deliver it. But if it's the word, 
it will not return void. When it goes forth, and you see, you can't depend on the vessel. The vessel delivers. It's all we are as vessels. Once it goes forth, we have no control over it. God uses it according to his purpose. But we are reminded of the word of God. Hebrews chapter 4, 12 and 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to divide the son of soul and spirit, and of joints and marble, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. The word of God reveals all. The word of God pierces all. And that's why, you know, as we are presenting the gospel, we should not hesitate to present it to everyone. Sometimes we look at someone and say they'll never receive it. And sometimes we feel like that we're wasting our time preaching it to certain people or, or witnessing to some people. But we must not forget what we are presenting. It's the word of God. And it has power. We know that there are many souls who have no intention in when they approach with the gospel of receiving. They have the intention of repelling it. But when the word goes forth and God means for it to pierce that heart, it will pierce that heart. God will work the work he desires to work and the word of God has caused many barriers and many souls to melt Hallelujah. when it's put forth. We must not hesitate to deliver the word and recognize that it does have the power to turn right Hallelujah. side up or right to turn upside down. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word of God Amen. and the power that's in it. And that's what we are presenting. We're not presenting a powerless message. But the message, the word of God is, is all power. And of course, we're reminded and uh, we have mentioned this scripture earlier, but it's our great commission. Matthew chapter 28, the great commission Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Teaching them to observe all things, can't pick and choose what we want to present of the word. But teaching them to observe all things. And so the commission reminds us that we preach all things. The volume of the book. Jesus said he came in the volume of the book. And so that's what we're presenting to the world, the volume of the book, the message, the salvation, the gospel that's been given unto us to deliver to the world. And of course, I'm mentioning again some scriptures that I mentioned earlier with some of the pastors, but uh, they just seem to fit. And Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 20. Curse not the king, no not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bed chamber. For a bird of air should carry the voice, and that which hath the wings shall fill the matter. We recognize that we're in a time of great communication. 
But the voice can carry all kinds of matters. But also that voice can carry the gospel. It says that that which hath wings shall fill the matter. So we use whatever instrument we find ourselves. Don't, don't shy away from anything that can help us present the gospel. And of course, that voice satellites. And as we have mentioned and talked about, you know, one time we thought that the airplane would fill that scripture because that's the only thing at the time we knew they had wings and where, you know, uh, where we thought about raining down tracks in uh, different areas with as the voice. But then, you know, it's just like it says. God gives light and he gives greater light. When further light shines upon the scriptures, we find that there is a device that more closely fits the scripture and it does truly carry the voice and enable us to reach the world. And we're, and we're talking about a world pandemic, but in talking and the early, uh, those other early believers who were hearing Paul and the other disciples spoke of turning the world upside down. We're talking about the message, as we said, turning the world right side up. And this, this nation, this world becoming so small. We thought about how small this world is. Communication. It used to be something would happen on the other side of the world and it would take us days, sometimes weeks, to hear about an event happening oh, in Europe or Asia. But today, it can happen this hour. And a few minutes after it happens, somebody on the other side of the world knows about it. How about with that with the gospel? It preached on this side of the world and the capability for, in an instant, on the other side of the world, it being heard. So what it reminds us is that everything is not going to be under our control. We may not control all of the instances of the gospel reaching around the world, but know that it's able. And so all that we can do, we can. We must stop trying to figure out how God can come, but recognize the world is so small that he can come. Amen. And that he can let us come to a point, and as the scripture says, he's going to cut it short with righteousness. So we're going to do our part and come to a point, and then God's going to say, okay, Amen. I got it from here. Amen. I'm cutting it short. You've reached that point. You've reached that point of perfection I purpose for you. You may not see it, but I see that you were I purpose for you to be. I see where the body has come together. I see where you've been washed. I see where the spirit is moving among you. You may not be able to see it among yourselves, how it's all moving, but I see it. And God's going to recognize when we get to that point, and he's going to take control. Amen. We must remember he's going to finish the work. Yes. So we just got to continue to strive to do all we can. Keep working. We can't slow down because the Lord's going to do all we purpose. The church is going to reach that place of perfection. He's going to have a bride our spot of rain. But we will see it when we see it. When we go to be in the air. Yes. Yes. We might we look around and I know we won't but look around and say hmm, I didn't know you were where you were. <laughs> I didn't know you were that mark because we were still even when we're spiritual 
we're still looking through that which is natural. And we're not going to see everything in that spirit. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. And so, as do wicked, wickedly, and such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall be corrupt by flattery. But the people that do know their God shall be strong in you exploits. We are going to do exploits because the Holy Ghost is still going to have a people that he's going to use and he's going to propel to carry the gospel and to be the witnesses that God purposes. We're going to complete that mission and we're going to do exploits. We're going to do exploits that are going to be spoken of as they spoke of Paul and the early disciples turning the world upside down. That's because the events that uh, were taking place were having such an impact and making such an impression and was being heard about all over. The message of the word of God is going to be heard about all over and the people of God are going to be doing exploits because we're going to be sharing the word and and the only thing that's going to be on our hearts is making sure that we witness the word of God and that we are letting the spirit direct us and, and it is propelling us to and compelling us to, to make sure that we're finding somebody in some way to share the gospel. Proverbs 25 and 25. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Good news from a far country. We have good news from above. Jesus said, we have good news from above. That we have a Savior who came and was victorious. He died on the cross. He descended into the earth. Scripture says he gave gifts to men. He was in the earth. And of course, earth tried to contain him. Satan tried to contain him. But there was no sin in him because his message was not of the world. When he was in the world, the world was not within him. But he continued to communicate with a far country, with his father that was in heaven. But it was a far country to us, but the Father was never far from him. And he was not far from the Father. And because he had that testimony, the scripture says he descended, but then he ascended. And the thing about his ascending, he had the testimony of victory for you and I. Where we had been on that downward spiral because of his resurrection, he put us on an upper spiral. He put us on an upward course because as he arose from the dead, he had a testimony that you and I, even though we are humans, if we live victoriously and live as he lived, we will be able to experience the same thing, to rise from the dead, to rise victorious. Shed mortality, put on immortality. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That time is coming as we continue to bear witness of the testimony of this gospel of a far country. A country where the Lord said, in his father's house, many men. Not so, he would have told us. But he went to prepare a place for us where he was, we might be also. And there have been those who had their eyes on that far country for a long time, even from the time of Abraham. For reading Hebrews 11th chapter. Starting at the 13th verse. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, 
and were persuaded to them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things is our claim declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came, they might have had the opportunity to have returned. But now, they desire a better country. That is, and heaven, where God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. He has prepared for them a city. That's what we are striving for. That's our goal. Isaiah chapter 55. Turn in verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it rain forth and bud, that it may give seed to the soul, and bread to the eater. So shall not word be the glory out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The word will be victorious. It's going to do what God purposes. So we just want to be encouraged. Continue on. Let the Lord direct us. Let him use.